I think if I may start with India, uh, ASEAN has always considered India a strategically important partner because of the architecture of the region. That it's, it's growing, it's prospering, it's part of uh, South Asia and Southeast Asia and indeed the whole of Asia, and we want it to be engaged in a systematic and constructive way. And that is why we have an ASEAN-India dialogue. That's why India is a member of the East Asia Summit. And I'm very happy that the Indians also see things in a similar way and invited all of us leaders, ASEAN leaders, to attend the Republic Day this year. Uh, India historically has been very focused on the subcontinent because uh, it's an all-consuming business and they, they have a complicated neighborhood and many issues to attend to. But as India's economy takes off, as its links with the rest of the world grow, trade links, investment links, people links, I think its stake in the regions, including in Southeast Asia and East Asia, will grow. And we are seeing that, and I, I'm happy that our summit meeting in India, in Delhi, this January was a manifestation of that. With China, of course, we have a deep and broad and at the same time complex relationship. It, we cooperate across uh, many, many, many areas, uh, all the fields of ASEAN, and very substantive projects, whether it's uh, in terms of um, economic development, whether human resource development, whether it's tourism, whether it's environment, uh, or it, even in security matters. At the same time, it's a complex relationship because there are also issues where uh, we have to manage potential conflicts. For example, the South China Sea. So it's one where each of the participants must at the same time work on win-win cooperation and simultaneously manage the competitive aspects and the rivalrous aspects in order not to allow them to blow up and uh, overshadow the constructive cooperation. And in this exercise, I think um, uh, all of the countries involved are realistic. They understand what is at stake. And Singapore is the uh, country coordinator for ASEAN's relations with China. Uh, we work as an honest broker in order to try and increase the common ground, whether the common ground is on economic cooperation or whether it's on negotiating, negotiating a code of conduct. Yes. Our relations with America are also substantial. The Americans have a different way of working from the Chinese or the Indians. Uh, they are a global power. ASEAN is one um, of the areas of focus, of attention, but it's not the only one, and it will never be the only one. Uh, we hope, we know that they put emphasis on Asia, and that is so whichever, uh, whether it's a Democrat or a Republican right. government, administration, and uh, in this Trump administration, the principal officers, the Secretary of State of Defense, the National Security Advisor, they've all visited and they've all said, they've visited the region, and they've all reaffirmed that this remains important to them. Of course, it, uh, North Korea is important to them, China is important to them, but I think that they also appreciate that it's not just these two countries, but the whole region where they have a lot of investments, a lot of stakes, mm -hmm. and a lot of friends. And ASEAN, on its part, has sees America as a very important trading partner, as a very important market, very important source of investments, of technology, and uh, of education for the young people, because many of the very of the of the talented young people in ASEAN countries. Uh, some, some time or other in their lives make it to America, either to study or to work or, or just to sojourn there for a while. So those are the three most intense relationships, I think, with Japan. Uh, Japan has engaged ASEAN for now, I think, 30 years formally. Of course, uh, in terms of informal relationships, Japan has been active in the region um, ever since the 1960s when they started investing outwards. Uh, their focus is not quite on the scale of the United States or even on the Chinese, but their economy is not a small one and their technology is not at all inferior to the others. And I think we are happy that with Mr. Abe there is a new emphasis on 
their links with Southeast Asia and uh, the rest of the region, and we look forward to pursuing that. I think with Russia, uh, Russia is a, a, a power with ancient history and uh, considerable um, military capability and an enormous sense of pride and mission. And they have felt that in Asia, they want to be at the table and they would like to participate mm -hmm. with ASEAN. And therefore, uh, when we expanded the East Asia Summit grouping, uh, when we in included America, we also included Russia at the same time. And we are happy that the Russians would like to do that. Um, the, in terms of the broader region, they have hosted APEC meeting once in Vladivostok. Um, Siberia is a land of enormous opportunity, tremendous natural resources. Uh, the population is not large, but the potential is enormous. And we hope that our relations with Russia can grow and prosper in accordance with this potential. So that's a very potted version. Um, European Union? <laughs> Sorry, that was the next le lecture. <laughs> the European Union uh, is, to us, if you look at it, the economy is bigger even than the U.S. economy. If you take it as a whole, the population is bigger. I think that strategic interest is less focused on the Far East. It's more an economic interest. Uh, there is a historical link with many of the European countries because uh, of the colonial ties. Uh, but really, that is just a jump-off point to, uh, to make use of in order to anchor a modern relationship between the EU and ASEAN. Uh, we see them as a cooperation partner. We'd like to do more with them. I talked about the Qatar, the air tra traffic agreement. In fact, we have an ASEAN-EU uh, FTA also, which is being negotiated, although with 27 or 28 countries on the other side and 10 on ours, uh, you can imagine that 280 possibilities to worry about. No, but it's going through the ratification No, process. no, no, no. The Singapore EU is going yeah. through ratification. ASEAN-EU, we are still negotiating. Okay takes a while. <laughs> but we would like EU to be engaged because economically they are not less than the US, either in size or in sophistication. Uh, what will take some time is for the EU to develop the political cohesion and identity in order for the high representative for foreign affairs to speak on behalf of the whole of the EU. And I don't think that they are quite there yet. <laughs>